Hey, Roger. Hey, we got a new case. I need you to go downtown to Gallo's Market. Interview everybody in there. We need to know what the facts are. Oh, son, I'm so worried about you. Your attorney's here. I'm gonna let you talk to him, okay? Okay. How are you? How are you doing? Oh, thank you so much for coming. Of course, of course. Hi, how you doing? Good, how you doing? Good. My name is Arpa Stepanian. I'm gonna be representing you. Okay. There's a couple rules I want you to pay attention to. Okay. One thing is you're in custody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Whatever you say, whether it's on the phone, mail, or if you talk to your cellmate, it's being recorded. Do you understand that? I do. Whatever you're saying, they can use it against you. So I don't want you to say anything. Okay. Second thing is, in order for me to win this case, okay, I need your trust. I need to know exactly what happened on that July 27th night. I got nothing to add. I'll tell you everything. Okay. Let's take it from the top then. DA gets here, I do all the talking, okay? I don't want you to say anything. Okay. All right, let's make this simple. Client pleads guilty, gets three years, he's out in two. We've done this before. You don't have the facts in this case. Your client has priors. You really want to go down that road? I'll take my chances. Deputy, let's get him out of here. Let's go. Let's go. Good afternoon. On July 27, at approximately 10 p.m., my client, a young, new dad, needed to go to the market to get diapers after a long day of work. It had only been three months since his new baby daughter was born, but he was taking his life seriously. He left his old friends behind, got a job, and decided he wanted to be a better man, a better husband, and a better father. A father that he never had. On that hot July summer night, he walked into Mr. Gallo's market. And he saw the neighborhood youth there. But it felt like a lifetime ago that he used to hang out with them. He also noticed the intense glaze from Mr. Gallo, but he ignored that because he was there on a mission. He was there to get diapers. And as he made his way to the back of the store, he grabbed a chocolate bar and knelt down and found the diapers that he needed. When he got back up and made his way to the front, he immediately noticed Mr. Gallo's intense and nervous glare. But before he could even say hello, he saw a flash, and everything went black. When he opened his eyes, a police officer was standing over him. And the officer wasn't asking him, how are you? Wasn't tending to his needs. He had just been shot. But instead, the police officer was interrogating my client and demanding that he admit that he had a gun, and demanding that he admit that he was there to steal. Ladies and gentlemen, the DA has the audacity to tell you that my client doesn't have a changed life. You heard him say that he has a past criminal history. You heard him say that he's charged with robbery and theft. But the DA is not telling you what he can't show in this case. The DA can't show you a gun because no gun was ever found. No gun was found on my client's person. No gun was found on my client. But you know what was found? Diapers and a chocolate bar. The DA has no evidence that my client was with the group of youth that were in that store. 
They can't prove that he was there with them, that he came with them, that he even acknowledged them. My client was there to buy diapers. You will hear no evidence otherwise. At the end of this case, there's only one verdict I'm going to ask you to bring. And that's a verdict of not guilty. Because the people cannot prove this case beyond a reasonable doubt. Thank you. Was the gun yours? Objection, Your Honor. Assumes facts not in evidence. Vague, ambiguous. Sustained. Do you own a gun? Objection, Your Honor. Relevance. Asked and answered. Sustained. Did you use a gun in the robbery? Your Honor, I object to this entire line of questioning. I have nothing further, Your Honor. Mr. Gallo, you stated that you saw my client with a gun. Are you sure about that? Yes, I am. There was other young people in that store. Isn't it possible that one of them were trying to rob you? I don't think so. I know his type. If my client had a gun, then where is it? I don't know. But why don't you ask him why he robs innocent and hardworking people? Sir, you shot and wounded my client. You mistook him for somebody else. He tried to rob me before. And this time he got what he deserved. Mr. Gallo, you strike me as an honest, hardworking person. Tell us the truth. Tell us what really happened that day. You know, my wife and I opened that store in 1978. We had just gotten married and had a few dollars saved, so we decided to go into business. She couldn't have children. So that store became our life. And it became a part of everything in our life. We made lifelong friends, helped out strangers and those in need. That's what our neighborhood was all about. Pretty soon, New faces walked into the area, and department stores moved in. And we didn't recognize anybody. And these young hoodlums would come into my store and disrespect me, and steal things from me. And twice, twice, they robbed me at gunpoint. And what did the police do? Nothing, absolutely nothing. A few years ago, my wife became ill and she passed away. <laughs> and I felt scared all the time. So I bought a gun and I swore that I would never let this happen again. Not in the one place that meant so much to us. The truth, Mr. Gallo. Tell us the truth. I, uh, I never meant to hurt anyone, and I'm not sure if it was him. Truly sorry. Thank you, Mr. Gallo. Thank you. Will the defendant please rise? After careful deliberation, the jury finds you not guilty of all charges. You're free to go home.